Most people in the world have no idea how Bitcoin works. But if you ask them how the dollar works, they'd probably also have no idea. They may start by saying it's a green piece of paper in their wallet or a deposit at a US bank, or accountants might say it's a cash or cash equivalent asset on a balance sheet. You'd probably get a number of different answers, and a lot of people would probably realize they don't exactly know what a dollar is. So here's my view of a dollar and how it relates broadly to markets and Bitcoin. A dollar is a unit of account that is tied to a basket of consumer goods, and this unit loses value against that basket of consumer goods over time at a roughly 2% annual rate. Actual dollars themselves may come in different forms. You could have a green piece of paper that is issued by the Federal Reserve. You could have a bank deposit at Wells Fargo. You could hold a T-bill issued by the U.S. government. And you could also hold short-term debt, known as commercial paper, issued by a corporation. All of these forms of dollars would be designated as cash and cash equivalents by an accountant, which means on a balance sheet, all of these are dollars. It's important to recognize that all of these dollars are IOUs or credit. The green piece of paper with a dead president on it is an IOU from the Federal Reserve. A bank deposit is an IOU from a bank. A T-bill is an IOU from the U.S. government. And a commercial paper is an IOU from a corporation. There are very few actual dollars issued by the Federal Reserve in the system. Most dollars are IOUs from banks, the U.S. government, and corporations. Now remember, dollars are designed to debase against a basket of consumer goods. This is required because the dollar system is based on credit and IOUs. If the dollar started to appreciate against a basket of consumer goods, then debt would get harder and harder to pay back, and since the dollar itself is mostly credit, it would turn into a deflationary spiral as defaults begin to occur and total dollars in the system began to stop growing or even shrink. So dollars need to be debased against basic consumer goods, but humanity is getting more and more productive at producing basic consumer goods. So the supply of dollars may need to grow more than 2% annually to achieve that 2% consumer price inflation target. M2 and M3 which are measures for how much total dollar credit exists, grows closer to 8% annually. Importantly, remember that most dollars are credit or IOUs. So how can the dollar debase? Well, the dollar debases by issuing more credit. Either the private sector issues credit by lending more money to individuals or small businesses, or corporations borrow dollars by issuing more short-term commercial paper. But what if the private sector is freezing up and we're in a recession or experiencing a deflationary credit problem. Well, then the dollar credit expands in the public sector. The Federal Reserve does QE, which is when they issue more Federal Reserve notes to buy T-bills, mortgage-backed securities, or any other dollar credit. And the U.S. government issues more T-bills by spending a budget deficit. So the issuance of more credit in either the private or public sector is exactly how the dollar gets debased. In the end, the dollar is designed to debase against a basket of consumer goods, and that results in the supply of dollars or dollar credit growing faster than the consumer price inflation rate due to capitalism, globalization, and technology deflation. This difference has historically been represented in the collateral that backs the dollar credit. This could be real estate, the S&P 500, or other high quality assets that tend to increase closer to the same rate the supply of dollars actually grows, which again is around 8%. Of course, my view is that over time, Bitcoin will attract a larger and larger share of these newly issued dollars, since Bitcoin has a perfectly fixed monetary supply not growing at 8% per year. Thanks for watching, everyone, and see you next time.